Hello and welcome back to Los Notes. This week we will practice the Hardy Weinberg principle. We have six different questions, each phrased in a different way, so that no matter what question you get, you'll be able to tackle it perfectly. Today we will start with question one. In my questions, you'll notice I say syndrome X because it doesn't really matter what the disease or syndrome or even hair color or fur color, it all doesn't matter. What makes a difference, what matters are the givens and what the question is asking us to find. The first thing you should do is identify what exactly the question is asking you to find. Let me show you what I mean by answering question number one. What is the frequency of the recessive allele? Use a highlighter, highlight the word frequency and recessive allele. Whether it's P square or Q square or P or Q, all of these are frequencies, right? But which one is the frequency of the recessive allele? That would be Q. See, I tell my students, at least in the beginning, identify whether we are working with P or Q. If you see the word dominant, it's P. It's recessive, it's Q. But is it Q square or is it Q? By practice, you'll be able to differentiate between them and soon you will notice that they are not even similar. Q is the frequency of the recessive allele, whereas Q square is the frequency of the individuals who are homozygous recessive. Once we get that, we immediately write next to the question, Q question mark. What is Q? We need to find Q. Now go back to the question and see what are the givens. 25% of a population of 1,000 individuals have syndrome X, which is a homozygous recessive disorder. What does this mean? For the individuals to have syndrome X, they need to be homozygous recessive. This is homozygous recessive. And the frequency of the individuals in this population that have syndrome X is 25%. So what is our given? Our given is the frequency of homozygous recessive individuals, which means we are given Q square. So immediately write that down and say this is Q square. So let's write that neatly here. Q square is 25%, which means 0.25. And it all comes together. We have Q square, we need Q, all we need to do then, Q is the square root of 0 0.25, which is equal to 0 0.5, and we have answered the question. The reason I chose this question is that a lot of my students ask why we didn't use this number, why we didn't use the population size, 1000. The answer is simple, as long as we have the percentage of the population who have syndrome X, it means we have the frequency. We have the number of individuals within the population that already have syndrome X. It doesn't matter if this is a thousand or a 10,000 or even a hundred thousand, okay? As long as 25% of them have syndrome X, at the end, the frequency will be 0.25. And what we need to answer this question is that frequency. And this was our question for today. I hope you found it easy. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and I'll see you in tomorrow's question. Bye.